All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to One Million Cups Chico Chapter. My name is Tim Sharkey. I'm the organizer here today and your MC. Um, we want to thank everyone for showing up today and spending some time with us to help share their experiences uh, with our One Million Cup presenters. Um, what is One Million Cups? One Million Cups is the accumulated cups of coffee it takes to be an entrepreneur, to have your small business, to get up in the morning and get the kids ready, uh, get on your Zoom calls, go to the next meeting, um, <laughs> go and do errands, come back, sit at your desk, try to be focused, get back into the groove and have another cup of coffee. And then, you know, once the kids are in bed, have another one or a beer, you know, it just all depends. But those cups <laughs> are always flowing when you have your own small business. So that's where the, the idea came up. But it's put on by the Kauffman Foundation. They're out of Kansas City, Missouri, and they are a nonprofit entrepreneurial uh, foundation, which created One Million Cups because um, it takes a community and an ecosystem to let everybody know that anyone can have a small business, anyone can have be an entrepreneur. You can have an idea, and this is a platform for you to share openly with uh, community peers and business leaders to help share not only your idea with the community, but to get feedback from the community from their failures, their successes, what's worked for them, who they've worked for, who they've worked with in the community, and to share those experiences because we all need to help uh, each other collaborate to succeed and create a better economy for our own communities. And this is what the Coffin Foundation um, saw the lack of in, in the communities across the United States is a place for people who are alone, have the ideas, they don't know who to talk to. Um, so we're here, we're, we're a platform where you can come and share your ideas, uh, get feedback, get support and, and guidance on where to go. And even for uh, other um, resources in the communities such as SCORE and SBDC, Small Business Development Centers. And there's, there's many more out there that are here to help us uh, succeed, especially now in a time of uh, this pandemic. Um, there's more and more people that are expressing their ideas and wanting to get out there and start their own businesses. At the same time, so many are closing. So hopefully we can be a resource in the next, um, in the next months, in the next year, probably for uh, small business owners to come to and uh, hopefully launch a new venture. So uh, today I wanna to say thank you to our organizers, uh, Miss Wendy Porter with uh, Community Colleges in Butte College. Uh, we have Eva Shepard with Chico Start. And um, we have uh, Jackie now too with uh, SCORE, correct? She is not here today, but thank you very much, Jackie. You're a great resource. Um, and our sponsors, Mr. Kent Hastings, every time we are live in the field, he takes uh, control of our audio, video, and our tech, which is very much appreciated. Um, setting up at each of the live events, recording everything, and putting it together, and and posting it for us. So thank you for that. It's very much appreciated, Kent. And today we have uh, oh we have two new uh, sponsors actually, uh, Explore Butte County, which they have graciously uh, stepped aboard to help us promote. Uh, new businesses and bringing people to Butte County, as well as build.com. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank them for their, their generous support and donations to help us uh, continue because it does take time uh, and resources to put this on every week. So thank you to all our sponsors. Um, and today we have some special guests. We have three presenters. We're going to be going back to back pretty fast. So presenters, make sure we watch our clocks. We're going to do six minute presentations with 10 minutes Q&A. And all our presenters are from uh, CSU Chico State, uh, and they are taking a business management class 451. And uh, if Eva would like to do an introduction on them real quick, we'll get going. Uh, we're going to be going first with Jake, then Adrian, and then Garrett. So uh, Eva, you can do the introduction now. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so yes, I am proud, proud, proud to present. Um, uh, uh, some of uh, the students from my class. Um, this is a requirement for them to practice their presentations. Um, and going through One Million Cups is a great opportunity to, for them to do that. 
Um, so the first presenter today is Jake Richardson. He is my only sophomore in my class, and he has a great idea for um, a company that's called BioBottle. Um, the second presenter will be Adrienne Whittlesey, and uh, she comes to us from Nevada City. So the beauty, beauty of Zoom is that people can attend class from wherever, right? And uh, Adrienne um, has already started her own business called Whittle, Whittlesey Wilderness Designs, and she will be sharing um, a little bit about her journey and, and what she offers there. Lastly, we have Garrett Buffo, who is, um, I believe, a senior this year, right, Garrett? Yep. And he um, is going to be presenting a, a really great idea called Real Capital Ventures. And with that, we will kick this off and we'll start with Jake. All right, Jake, let's see if we can share your screen. There we go. All right, I'm hitting start. The floor is yours, Jake. How's it going, everyone? Um, I'm Jake Richardson, and the name of my company is BioBottle. Um, BioBottle is a uh, biodegradable water bottle, and the problem that I'm trying to solve in our environment is man-made pollution by the production and discarding of plastics so specifically like beverage containers and water uh water bottles um so our mission and our value proposition is less dependency on fossil fuels um we want to change customer behavior and uh lead the anti-plastic uh revolution without causing any harm to the environment um, so right here is a overview of the steps that I plan or I'm taking right now and that I plan to take um, As you see like here on the right side is like a prototype that I've like I would like our bottles to look like in the future um, And then as you see right now uh, Right. I'm doing the research um, And then so here's like a revenue model of like a typical transaction per um, per bottle. Um, so you got the revenue and then you got the customer acquisition, uh, support, partner fee and margin. Um, you got like a margin of like around 50 cents per, per bottle that is sold for around $1.61. Um, so here's a go-to market. Um, environmentally conscious companies and some of those uh, Companies are Ocean Cleanup, which is in the Bay Area, uh, Chico Sustainability, which is from here, and uh, Whole Foods Market and Chico Co-ops. Um, some also is some beverage companies, um, such, such as Chico Chai, uh, Tizani, and Hint Water. Um, those are uh, different type of bottles that are um, used or that use plastic, and hopefully in the future we could. If I can get a, a bottle that is biodegradable, we can go to those companies and get them to use our bottle. And then hopefully in the future, if the bottle idea works, we can go to companies that sell plastic forks and plastic knives and plastic spoons. And here are some companies that do sell those like premium culture and heavyweight forks. Um, so here's a competitive, a competitive analysis. So on a, based on a scale of five, um, I rated these companies as like Hydroflask, uh, Clean Canteen, and uh, Lease Packaging. Lease Packaging is a company uh, overseas, um, but they're doing a similar type of thing. Um, so I got like design and cost. Um, as you can see here, we got we got my company, like, and then these other ones on this chart. Um, here's management team. This is a picture of me, uh, founder. Um, and then, so here are some financial projections and key metrics. Uh, so starting at year one, uh, I mean, this is not, I don't know how uh, true these projections would end up being, but um, hopefully it just keeps going up from year one to year two to year three. And then, so here's some, here's current status, accomplishments, timeline and use of funds. Um, so you get to start and then come up, came up with the business plan, finances, um, and then as I'm doing, I'm presenting right now, and then hopefully I begin uh, marketing and protection. 
and then here's my contact contact information. All right, Kim, you're not at four minutes. You have time to spare, Jake. Yeah, good job, Jake. So um, I also want to put context to the rest of the audience to let them know that um, this class has been in session for five, almost six weeks, and they started their business plans two weeks ago, and this is the first time these students are presenting, the very first time. So, um, and some are in ideation phase, some are in beyond research and almost to MVP, and then some people are already um, down the line. So I have students everywhere, but good job, Jake. And I'd also say one more thing, and that is Jake is sick. <laughs> so I'm really grateful that he is here today. Thank you for right. showing up, Jake. Q&A, Q&A, hit him up. I have a question. Um, so Jake, you mentioned your, you know, you presented your go-to-market slide, but I didn't really hear how you plan to approach those market opportunities. Um, so I would... So I think the main thing would be is I go go to these, some of these um, uh, like bigger bigger markets that actually that care about the environment and that want to help get rid of plastic pollution, and I would go to them and then I would get my brand out there and then hopefully once once that happens um, go to these other like beverage companies that are selling the plastic water bottles and tell them and go to them and say our product will help the environment and it would make your company look a lot better. Um, and I think you guys should use our water bottle. Thank you. I have a question. So Jake, uh, who are you using to help you with engineering the bottle itself to become biodegradable? Do you have any, uh, chemists or engineers? Like who would you go to, to do that? Um, so there, so that one company I said, um, lease packing, um, so they kind of have an idea figure it out. Um, and so I would kind of uh, not go based off completely their idea, but um, I would, I, I was, uh, I just got in contact with them the other day. And so I'm going to keep continue to talk to them and kind of get a idea a base, like based off how they did it. And then from there I'll take, uh, I'll go off and then I'll try to do my own idea. Awesome. Okay. Have you uh, looked into PLA for uh, like desktop printing to do like a prototype? And I think there's some improvements for PLA may be more suitable to food uh, storage. I was looking for that on Hackaday. I, I, I just couldn't find it real quick. But uh, you know what? PLA is like plant-based bioplastic, although, you know, it's no petroleum in there. I, so you might look into that. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think that's what Lease is. Lease is a, a vegan bottle and it's made out of the cellulose of, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So um, one of the conversations that'll probably fall out of that conversation with Lease packaging is um, maybe how to partner with them or maybe license their technology. So. There's some girl in Turkey doing uh, something bioplastic made out of banana peels, <laughs> but that's, that's cool. That's, that's weird. You know, you look, she's a hazard video. I don't know how far along she's got with that. But. Yeah. <laughs> it would be interesting to look at um, because up here, you know, the rice industry is so big. There's like some bike product of rice production that could be used um, to try to leverage, you know, a local opportunities yeah definitely yeah leveraging ag waste big 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 opportunity there so jake you mentioned your um your competitors what do you see uh, is going to be your competitive advantage um so so with those so with hydro flask and um like and um sorry one second clean with, canteen uh, clean, uh, canteen yeah um uh, so they their bottles are more like bigger bottles. It's not actual like they don't they don't look like plastic bottles. You'd get like a what like a thirty pack of them. Um, so but my so my idea would be is with our bottles if you you'd have smaller bottles and you could throw them away instead of having to do like the cleanup with them every single time. That's what hydroflask and clean bottles or uh, 
protein levels do. And you might want to, um, I don't know if this really applies, but the sanitation value, like I know as we've been going through COVID, you know, you, I don't know where I saw this, but you couldn't bring your own bottle. Oh, I know what it was. It was my daughter's was going to field hockey and she couldn't bring her own water bottle. They had to use disposable water bottles. So you might want to add that to your competitive advantage portion, the san sanitation, something like that. Absolutely. I mean, that's huge right now. That's huge. I know we've doubled our, our recyclables just because of it. Well. Yeah. And the disaster, disaster relief organizations, you know, when people are coming in out of disaster situations like the fire, they don't have water bottles. They don't have their own water bottles. So, you know, that's. Yeah, we, we provide, I, I've been on some of those things and, and they provide like the lowest <laughs> they're actually pretty tasty. I, I'm amazed at how well they are, but they're like the lowest quality off-brand yeah. water bottles you can get. But, yeah. It's all water. Well, we have two, two minutes left, um, but I like the biodegradable uh, the idea. And I was wondering, do you think if you, like Wendy was bringing up using um, some sort of uh, byproduct like rice or some other items, do you think that having a bottle that's not clear, but is uh, some sort of bio-based, uh, do you think that'll affect the market or kind of differentiate you? Have you thought about those? Um, so I have thought about that. Um, I mean, there are some advantages and disadvantages to having a, a clear bottle and a colored bottle, but I think if the bottle works and it, the water tastes fine in there, um, I, I going forward, I don't think there would be any problem with having a different colored water bottle. Yeah, I think right. People's views now with biodegradable and plastics, uh, it might actually set you aside because it'll, it'll look different. <laughs> All right, we got one more minute. Any last questions? All right, we'll wrap that up then. Jake, thank you so much for your time and showing up. Uh, I hope you feel better. So we really appreciate you showing up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jake. Luck. Everybody give him a big hand. Yeah. Yay. And good luck. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. All right, let's close and cancel this timer. Right. So Adrian, let's get your slides up next. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boom. You get to present there. <clears throat> Hello, I'm uh, Adrian of Whittlesea Wilderness Design, uh, the lead artist and woodworker for the venture. And thank you for the opportunity to share my business with you today. So first, what is our opportunity? Uh, Whittlesea Wilderness is a woodworking and functional art venture that utilizes reclaimed wood from already felled trees. Our business brings to market high-end functional artisan products. The problem that we solve for our current customers is the problem of memorability. We have a customer that happens to be a loan officer and her team gives our serving boards as gifts to home buyers. So those customers will remember her team when it comes time to look for a new house or to re refinance their current home. Wait, some slides, Adrian. Okay, okay, there we go now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, a little history about how we got started. Whittlesea Wilderness came about out of necessity. Uh, we were remodeling a house and needed an economical option for kitchen counters. We had access to some wood and basic tools to make it all work. That incidentally is not the most economical means of um, creating counters as I was learning to use epoxy at the time and it has a pretty steep learning curve and a high price to learn. But our counters are unique and beautiful, so it worked out. Um, our unique value proposition is that we use only reclaimed wood to create our products. Each reclaimed piece has presented itself in a unique way and therefore comes with its own story. This allows us to share an interesting narrative about where our products came from or how they found their way to you, our customer. 
So the underlying magic are unique, sorry, each piece is unique from start to finish and presents itself um, and its special characters to us as we begin working with them. Uh, the results are as unique and varied as the processes that we use while creating them. For our business model, we plan for a hybrid model focusing primarily on web sales. We will open an Etsy shop to begin with, uh, where we can sell off the shelf items as well as directly commissioned pieces. Our future plans include a transition to a full standalone website. And the other side of our model will include making use of our local market with select curated pieces for key partner shops. So our marketing plan will encompass a variety of options from social media, which we've dipped our toe into with Instagram, to creating a blog that will showcase stories um, behind some of our pieces, as well as tips on how to use and care for the items. We will also plan to invite affiliates to create content for the blog. Our biggest marketing strategy to date has been word of mouth. Um, our website will tie all of the pieces together and add our interest in forest restoration and other causes to the mix. So what sets us apart is our commitment to using reclaimed wood, our desire to build a culture around our products and our passion for telling a story. For financial projections, um, we, looking in the next three years, include a need to build our brand, invest in capital structure, and to update equipment as the need arises. And where we are, we formed the business in July of 2020, and we have our first contracted commission that leads to at least 10 sales a month. We've taken on three private commissions, and to date, we have successfully delivered the, three, the first three contracted commissions and two of our private commissions and the business has started um, supporting itself. So our leadership team, <clears throat> myself, um, lead artist, co-founder, and my husband, who is the lead of our supply chain. <laughs> and thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. You had a minute and a half left. You were right, four and a half. Uh, well, I can tell uh, your, your husband is obviously in charge of the supply chain because he has a <laughs> chainsaw handy. Yes. <laughs> that was fantastic, Adrian. Um, love it. Um, I really like how you are tying story to the pieces of wood. Um, I'm assuming that you would put that story into the packaging for each piece. And I love that... Um, what the real estate agent is doing. That's an interesting market strategy right there. There's a lot of opportunities. So for example, you know, Explore Butte, who is now one of our, our sponsors, they do, when we bring in uh, people into our community to do business meetings, things like that, Explore Butte will put out a gift package for new people, especially if we have high rollers coming from big businesses, things like that. And um, that would be an excellent product. You know, typically they're clean canteens, a bottle of wine, that kind of thing. So that's a, that's a really good opportunity there. Um, do you have, can I buy something for Christmas presents? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So your website is up and you're... Um, the website is not up. I am on Instagram and I can, you can direct message me. Um, we also have the email and you can contact me there or call me any of those ways. Thank you. Just a little reminder, we have 10 minutes left on the meeting. So I think we'll be able to finish the Q and A with Adrian and then log off for our final presenter. So just a heads up. Thank you. I have a question uh, though. So I want to, oh yeah, go, go Tim. Um, your social media, I was, you know, I'm, I'm huge on TikTok right now. Um, and I have seen like two or three woodworkers doing the epoxy uh, fill. And there's one girl who's, who's doing it. She's just showing examples on smaller boards, like with the wave scenes. Um, 
and she's only been on there for like three months. She has over six and a half million views and over a hundred thousand followers. And um, she's done a couple small little videos saying just thank you so much for the, the support. Um, Cause I love seeing that story and seeing each piece being made and it's made for each person. So that story part, like you were saying is, is awesome. And then to throw your side about being reclaimed and, and doing more of a story behind each piece. I mean, that would be huge. Um, it's just blowing up on that, on that side of the market. Um, Cause it's live, it's short, it's quick They get to see who you are. They get to see the product it gets out there and just, you can jump up tenfold on the followers and the fans compared to Instagram. I would really, I would really say try that out and have some fun with it. That's actually great advice for all these guys, you know, to, cause they're going to get feedback in real time. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, and I know nothing about TikTok. I better learn about it other than like, it's a thing, but um, yeah, but a horrible entrepreneurial teacher I am. <laughs> so I'll have to go figure that out. But um, I, Let's see, um, Adrian. I was going to have you ex expand a little bit more on um, perhaps your, you and your husband's discussions about future, kind of future commission piece, or like some. Why don't you share with them some of the commission pieces you've been, you private commission pieces you've been asked to do, and then, and perhaps your future thinking for your your product lines ongoing. <clears throat> so, some of the the private commissions have uh, largely been friends. They have gifts that they want to give, something unique and special for milestones in friends and family's lives. Um, and so they've largely been the serving platters at this time. Um, we are going to be doing a wall art piece with the ocean waves. I just have to find the right, the right wood piece that I really want to, to expand with that. Um, for future, we have tools, but to get into bigger things, um, we need to get a few more pieces to make them to make it efficient. Otherwise, it's it's a lot of tape. Me making molds with tape, um, and it requires a lot of rework. So the, the future plan is as we grow, we can take on bigger things and do more. Um, and also as we kind of learn to make our own tools work <laughs> in different ways than what they're necessarily meant for um, and modify things. Yeah, I think uh, countertops, um, well, I, I know that may not be in your wheelhouse to do more of those um, at the moment, but I have a feeling this could be something that'd be commissioned um, in the future more and more so, especially up in your area with so many people, like real estate's blowing up in Truckee. It's blown up because all the people who have expendable income that want to get out of the Bay Area are just snapping up stuff. Like um, one of the, I was talking to a gal at the Truckee SBDC recently and she was saying how the schools are full. Like they have a 30% increase of kids being enrolled in elementary and middle schools. That's huge, just in six months. So they're like, ah, you know, and so real estate's all like fat and happy. And so I was thinking more real estate um, mm -hmm. deals um, and then maybe private commissions from there because those pieces are going to be seen, right? Anyway, those are just- On those, those home part. office, we just created a new desk because we had to expand our space <laughs> with, with Zoom. And so we've just made a desk and I think that would be a way to go too is get into desks, things of that nature, which are- in between and something we can still manage at this time. And even like behind the Eva, that butcher block behind you, those will be easier to make than full countertops. Yeah, uh, for, sure. for sure. How do you find your, your wood? Um, so my husband is actually a timber faller <laughs> and there ends up being a lot of trees that he'll come across that are dead. Um, there, there are trees that we look at and I think, oh, that's amazing, but they're wildlife trees and we don't ever take wildlife trees. Um, but he'll come across something that's dead that's probably that's going to be coming down regardless. Um, and there'll be interesting bits and pieces off of that. So we'll get a lot of things that way. Um, or wood that's been around. Uh, the Interestingly, the house we live in was my husband's grandparents' house. They built it and we remodeled it. So there was a lot of wood that had to come out of the house uh, that we've used for different things too. Right. So how did you uh, calculate your, oh, sorry, Eva. No, no, go. 
Yep. Okay, so how did you calculate? I mean, this is tricky in, in, the, in your type of business, you know, how much you're going to charge for a piece, because there's so much time that goes into it. It's really hard to make that calculation accurately and fit it to where people will pay that price. Right. right. Um, as far as how we calculate what we're, we're charging for current pieces, do you mean? Okay. So with our, the contracted uh, pieces that we have, it's kind of a special deal where because it's consistent and we know how many pieces we're doing a month, there's a discounted rate for kind of bulk item. Um, otherwise, it really depends on the wood. So burl wood tends to be quite a bit more expensive, but if you're in the market to pay for something that's made out of burl wood, then you're kind of in the market to spend that extra money. Uh, some of the things, if we use a soft wood like pine, it's beautiful, but it doesn't hold up um, as well. I mean, it holds up but if you take a knife and cut on it, you're gonna leave marks, it's gonna to have to be resurfaced. So those things we tend to price a little bit lower. And then it depends on how much epoxy I have to use. So if it's an ocean board, there's, a, there's more time with me playing with the color and the art, but um, there's less epoxy. If it's a river board or something larger, there's a lot more epoxy in it. Um, and so that factors too for the the pricing we've got two minutes left before it cuts us off any more questions for adrian i, uh, I saw this uh website here uh grot now uh, what the heck is it here just a little moment uh, are there any maker spaces up there it, Grot House, solid wood surfaces. They have a reclaimed wood uh, section. I, I put a link on the chat window there if you check that out. Maybe. They might help with pricing and other things, you know, whatever. But it sounds like you have a handle on materials and stuff. So you know, <laughs> not going to tell grandma how to, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It helps. Yeah, I also have plans to um, contact like local or in a, a fairly local market different um, orchards and things like walnut um actually the company my husband works for which is robinson timber out of grass valley they also own walnut orchards um and they have to take down trees at certain times damage that sort of thing and maybe create relationships with different uh, companies where i can get wood that has to come down is coming down or is damaged um, to work with that as well. Awesome. All right, we have one minute, so I want to say, go ahead, well, Eva. No, I was going to say, why don't we go ahead and go off and get back on, so then we can yep. get Garrett going. But if you were going to ask a question, please do. I was going to say, let's let's log off before it cuts us off, and we'll come back and just maybe do one more question, and then we'll introduce Garrett and get this show on the road. So we'll be back right after this. Okay. See you guys in a sec. All right, everyone's making it back. <laughs> Adrian, um, yeah, I like that idea of making relationships with different uh, places. And since your husband's in the in the in that industry, one of my friends was an arborist in just the more relationships he made along the way people would just call him in general about different wood that was ready to go or stuff that they knew that he was involved you with broke up so there for a second tim i was saying um just creating those relationships like you you said um i think will go a long way for people just to keep you in mind and send you a uh, product uh you might get too much but <laughs> If your husband has a truck and can get a trailer and haul stuff away, that would be awesome. That was a good idea. Right. Any last questions for Miss Adrian? Anybody? Well, thank you, Adrian. That was an awesome presentation. Thank you for the Q and A. Wish you great success, and I think you'll be on your way. Um, 
to an awesome uh, future of having fun being an artist. So now we have uh, Garrett Buffo with his idea, which was investment. What was it, Mr. Garrett? Real Capital Ventures. It is Real Capital Ventures, and it is a real estate investment. All right, you have the floor. I'm going to hit the timer. Let's see if we can get your slides up. Yes, you guys see this all right? Yep. Yep. Just hit yep. Sorry, one second. I got to move this so I can see my present. Oh, whoops. Sorry, the Zoom, you know, the Zoom box. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Down. All right. Perfect. It's all you. Perfect. So, my business is Real Capital Ventures. Um, and we build real estate portfolios for long-term wealth. The problem that I found is that um, many Americans today rely way too much on their salary from their jobs to cover all their expenses. And I think that long-term that that's not going to be something that they can always rely on, especially you see with what just happened now um, with COVID and everything. A lot of people got caught up, cut off from their salaries. And thankfully, unemployment, you know, came in handy for some families, but not necessarily everyone. Um, most investments don't provide monthly income. And I think with millennials, that's the big problem is everyone knows that they can put money in Apple and make money next year, but they don't want to wait till next year to make that money. And they don't necessarily, they believe that they can make money long term. But I think if they saw monthly income um, every month coming in, that it would encourage them more to invest. Um, and then most millennials don't feel comfort, make, com comfortable making their own investments. Um, they want to be ad advised on that um, and they want to have like a pathway. Um, and then here you have a little quote on the side saying that the average millennial net worth is $10,000. So that's not necessarily a ton of money. So why did I want to start this business? Um, I've always believed that real estate is a great investment and you know, it provides monthly cash flow, it provides appreciation and tax advantages. Um, so our goal would be to help you build a real estate portfolio that provides that monthly income. And here's a great quote that I like on the right side that I got from an article. Um, it says real estate as an investment is a much stronger return potential than stocks. The first reason is leverage. The second is that these properties can provide or generate passive income. And finally, real estate investors enjoy tax advantages that stock investors don't. So the great thing is you have no knowledge, no experience. Um, there's no problem with that. I would want to be like that middleman to help you find, um, you know, we would find the great market, the property with potential, get the real estate agent, the manager, put tenants in the property, and even help you find a great CPA for your tax advantages, we would provide a turnkey solution. So you make passive income in your first month of investing. So here's a business model. I try to dumb this down as much as I can, just because I get way too into it. And it's really, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, but basically it would be before the buy, it would be find the market. So, um, you know, we would look at analytics and try to find markets that we think will do great over the next 10 years, 15, 20 years. Um, then it would be to buy the property that we think has a ton of potential then it's to rehab the property. Then it is to rent out that property to a great tenant that we think will be able to pay on time every single month. Then we have a, pro then we have a process of looking inside at our team and saying, you know, is this providing a great return that we just want to keep for our own portfolio? Or is it that we want to sell this to a buyer or one of our investors so they can make passive income, um, you know, right in that first month. And the, the reason why I love this model is there's two people really in real estate that other than like an agent that actually like are in real estate to make money. There's flippers, which we kind of all know fixer uppers and stuff like that. You know, they can make $120,000 on one property, you know, a million dollars on one property, but their biggest problem is if they can't sell that property, they have holding costs. Um, you know, if the market goes downturn, they might hold on to that property for months or even years and then end up breaking even. And then the other side is investors. You know, they're wanting to buy the property and hold that for long term. But the problem with that is that you might only have ten, twenty thousand dollars to invest. So you might only be making, you know, little return over a long period to where investors can make a ton of money if they go in and buy a two million dollar uh, apartment complex. But you know, for everyday people, they can't do that. Uh, so that's why I like this model. 
here's like my market plan is, um, you know, we would try to get hard money lending or private lending to go and buy, let's say a hundred thousand dollar house, um, and get $120,000 to go put $20,000 into that home, fix that home up, put a tenant in it, and then show the case that to buyers, um, or keep that for our own portfolio. But we would need investors to kind of help give us money to do that. And then we, like what I was explaining is we have that time to look at, you know, do we want to keep this or do we want to sell this? So for a competitive analysis, instead of looking at other real estate companies, I looked at actual total returns because a lot of people might argue like, I think the argument if I was trying to get someone to buy an invested property is what's the best place for me to put my money. So obviously with fixed income, you have very low risk, but your returns very low um, stocks and equities. Um, you have, you know, a good return and little, no risk or well, you have, you have risk, but it's not, you can definitely leverage it. And I think real estate's a similar risk, but done correctly. Um, you can have a better return which I'd love to explain that longer, but obviously I don't have a ton of time. The team is me, um, but down the road, the ideal team would be to you know, have a great property manager, contractor, CPA, that obviously don't work for us that we partner with so we can outsource work to them. Here's a financial projections. Um, this would be doing five homes the first year and selling them for $20,000 profit, um, 30 homes the next year, and in year three doing 100 homes. Here's my current timeline. Um, you know, first I need to buy that first property and learn the home buying process, rehab and rent these properties, um, then network with investors to show that this process works and then try to find a team and build a team that can do 10 properties um, per month. And here's my contact info. So, is he right on time, Tim? I might've went a little over. He's like 20 <laughs> seconds over. That's not oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I'll we give it to him that. on that one. <laughs> so I tried to speed it up at the end. I realized I was going over. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of information to put in there. That was a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, Jared, um, why don't you share with them also your background in real estate and in um, uh, rental management? Yeah. So I've been studying and trying to be, trying to learn as much as I can with real estate over the last two years during quarantine. I took uh, multiple real estate courses. Um, you know, courses can be hit or miss, but the courses I was taking were like, I invested a lot, a lot of money and I learned a ton. It really changed my entire perspective on real estate. Um, and I've managed um, vacation rentals um, for about a year. And then during COVID, I got that cut off um, because the properties were in Hawaii. So that was kind of tough. Um, but yeah, I definitely learned the management side is good because you understand that you know, there's a lot of problems that come up. So it is very worth paying someone to manage the property at the highest level and provide the greatest experience for your tenants. Um, and then with the studying and stuff that I've done, I've just really been hitting the numbers and understanding how to look at numbers, um, expenses, um, understanding cap rates, understand, you know, analytics for every different city and how, you know, really buying a great property at a fair price is going to get you a great return in the future. You don't necessarily need to be buying, um, you know, crappy properties and hope that you can hit a home run within a year. So there's a whole lot of different areas in real estate you can invest just like in the stock market. There's a bunch of different strategies. So that was, you know, a big learning curve for me. I think this is fabulous. This is a really great idea. Um, my husband and I have, have talked about, investing in real estate it seems like such a pain in the butt you know having to hire the property manager and all of that so having this one stop you know would be great if we could see a return on the investment <laughs> my question to you is my, my daughter is interested in going to Humboldt State and so we were talking about buying a home up there that we could rent out to students or you know trying to invest so would your would your business allow for investors to um, pick a location they're trying to target? You know, my goal would be almost to be an advisor in the sense of, so if you came to me and said, you know, I want to buy a home in, in, in um, sorry, well, Humble, And we said, okay, well, our market is, let's say Tucson. And we said, in Humble, you're going to, you know, have, you know, higher property taxes, you know, and kind of do a you know, pros and cons. So if you buy a home, you put 20% down 
and you have to pay no rent for your daughter for four years, five years, and you know, you have her roommates pay, what's going to be the return on your investment doing that versus going and buying a home with us making this return, right? It might almost be better to buy a home out of area and then pay a thousand dollars a month, set about $700 a month for her to be rented, renting in California. Yep. So I think that that's like the great thing is, you know, my thing is I've always wanted to build my personal real estate portfolio. But if you can charge to help people do the same and then take the money you make to go invest back in your own personal real estate portfolio. And that's why I think this is the best model for me. Um, and, you know, I, and I interviewed like 20 people and asked their opinion on this. And every single person believed that real estate is a good investment and that properties will continue to appreciate. And I said, well, then why don't you do it? They said, well, there's, I, I don't know how. With a stock, I can just put in a buy order. And people still want an advisor to do that, even though they could do it on their own, yeah. right? <laughs> so it, I think it's just the security of having a team that you trust and selling myself to people, you know? Um, and that's like the big thing. And the other thing is if, if I was going to invest in, let's say, a million dollar apartment, I said, well, our company alone is putting $100,000 into it. How much more comfortable would that make you feel? Yeah, so, that's brilliant. Yeah. Sorry, that's like more like long term, but. The other thing I like about this model is um, that it's very data driven. And, um, and uh, I think that's going to go a long way towards um, having conversations with investors and having, you know, just even the, um, even the comparison that you just made for Wendy, um, that's, that in and of itself is, oh, um, hold on a second. Tim, can you go let Tomiko in? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, uh, you know, um, what was I saying? Oh, the example that you just gave Wendy is also a great um, argument, case statement, right? You know, an argument without making an argument, right? Mm -hmm. just, like explains like how, you know, and um, I like how you turned that into additional revenue stream like that. So that's good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you can really, you can really make different products for your business. So mm -hmm. there's the, you know, kind of gateway drug to get people <laughs> in or people like, people people like me you know you offer some level of free and then there's an advisory cost to getting a little bit more in depth and then that grows into a real customer mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, th I think i think that you know selling myself and the business idea is like the main thing um you know i was me and eva were talking about it and said you know if i can figure out how to do you know five of these homes successfully where I have the opportunity to refinance, keep it from my own portfolio and have minimal cash in it because I fix it up or sell it to an investor. I make money and then they are making revenue each month. If I could do five to 10 of these and then go to private money and get some lending to you know, speed it up, I think that's like my goal. Um, and then, I mean, I've talked to you off about the investment side and how real estate is so much better in my opinion. Um, and I think that if I can condense that and make it more efficient, how to explain it. I think I could really sell anyone. Yeah. Um, so that's well, you, a good did job. you did a good job here. So, I mean, um, and so the more that you practice you and Adrian, right. And Jake, I don't think, I think Jake's off. He is sick as a dog. So I'm so grateful that he pulled it through and he's been sick for three days. Um, you know, uh, the more you guys practice, the more comfortable you're going to be. And the more, um, one of the things we talked about in our lectures the other night was being able to improv, right? When you read the mood of your audience, right? Um, so and not improv to be funny, right? Improv to make sure that you're hearing help. And then the other thing that um, Ayana said about having the customer help you design your products or services, right? When you get that feedback, right? From your customers like Wendy or Kent or Tim or myself, right? You know, that helps you think about what you're offering and how you can tune it. Not so you can be everything to everyone. But that you will, you know, what were we talking about, Garrett? About you could be 10, you know, 10, I, you're going to, was it you and I that were talking about that? All right. 10, uh, you could have uh, 10 great ideas and none of them come to fruition, but you got one or two that you really focus on. Oh uh, yeah. Right. And um, that's what's going to make it across the finish line. Okay. okay. So anyway, um, any more questions for Garrett? I had one. So say, okay. yeah. I don't got $20,000 to put into a house, but I got five grand. Is there a way for me just to invest in grow my portfolio to then put it into a house with you to say, Hey, I want to be in real estate. Instead, I trust in you. 
I'm going to put towards your company and then help me build a portfolio or at least build that money up to put a down payment somewhere down the line to get a property. That would be something uh, I think a lot more people might buy into at first. I mean, not everyone has a credit available. So <laughs> that would just hit me as something like, Oh, I'll give you five grand and let's see where it goes over the next year. So yeah, year I, so. Think, I think that I, I totally agree with that. And that's kind of a similar place where I'd probably be is there's different options. So if, if I can go to you and say, Hey, I'm going to go fix up this house. Um, we'll be a, we'll do a general partnership. You'll be the limited partner. I'll manage everything. Um, you're going to be, you know, totally safe. You give me the 5,000, I'm going to give you 10% annualized return. I'm going to go fix up this house and then either do that over and over and over and over again, you can make money. Or if you want to invest and have your name on a house, then there's ways you could do that without having to go through like, like you wouldn't necessarily have to be like a syndication. You could do, go do that and get three to four people to do that. Um, the only thing that would scare me about that is if it was two or three people that you didn't know and they wanted to sell the house and you're like, no, I love this investment. Oh, that's a, your well, buy-sell well, agreement going into it. You yeah, know, you'd have to have an own you of the sort. That would, but, um, you know, uh, Gary, we'll take this offline because we're about to run off, run off, run out of time. Um, the allergy meds haven't fully kicked in yet, so my brain's still cotton. Um, but uh, I think that could be a great way to have something local to experiment with, though, too. True, yeah. Remember what we were talking about yesterday? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, my, my focus right now is get that first home yeah. or first property done. Okay. Um, get all that hard yeah. learning. It. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. Well, Thank you so much for the time. Yeah, great job. Great job, everybody. Great job, Adrian. Great job, Garrett. Great job, Jake. May he, may he nap in peace. Okay, there you go. All right. Go ahead, Tim, wrap it up. All right, so thank you, everyone, for your time and showing up today. So please, um, if you have someone else with a great idea or just an idea, please bring them along. Um, have them come and join in one of the meetings and show them uh, this is a safe place to share your ideas and get some support. And thank you to our organizers and our sponsors. Kent, uh, Butte, um, Butte County, um, and Bill.com. Yeah, my allergies are bugging me too. Today. <laughs> uh, explore Butte County. So uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And uh, this is our first time doing three in a row. So it was awesome. I, it was very, very fun for my myself today. So thank you, everybody. And we're going to see you next week. Remember, go be awesome today. We're going to have at least two, if not three more students. Okay? Awesome. Okay. So we'll see everybody next week. Thank you guys for your time. Appreciate cool. it. Thank you. Bye. Bye, hon.